Hey, we're ready, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation 4. This time, do a real quick rundown of how to do carriers in the test event. This is the first test event, and if you're watching this in the future, and it's not, say, February of 2021, this may not apply. So, jumping right into it, after you follow the somewhat easy tasks to actually unlock a carrier, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually go in and select your stuff. Though typically I don't like to tell people what to do, you're probably going to want to take Air Groups Mod 1 and Air Groups Mod 2 because the Langley and the Hosho have an amount of firepower that would be embarrassing to most destroyers. And you're not going to really want to rely on your secondaries under any set of circumstances. Then, by the upgrade to the hull, this is similar to if you had actually earned the experience needed to get the next hull upgrade, but you don't need to use XP to get it, and there's really no reason not to do it except to make your life more difficult. After that, you are going to want to set up your commanders. Uh, stereotypes are going to take you pretty far here. Uh, the game is also hinting pretty solidly at what choices you should make. If you have ever seen a painting of an American naval aviator in action during World War II, you probably are going to picture in your mind a dauntless dive bomber with its flaps open, descending quickly upon some poor and unsuspecting battleship or perhaps aircraft carrier. By contrast, if you were ever to think of a Japanese naval aviator, you'd probably think of a Kate torpedo bomber skimming low over the water and dropping a torpedo. If you follow this line of reasoning, you'll probably do pretty well, and also you can tell pretty clearly what each nation is supposed to be good at by how they've sort of given us these specific commanders. When looking for inspirations, to save you some time, I'll say that I recommend the following commanders. First, Yezi Sversky is undoubtedly the best inspiration you can have right now in the game for carriers, because getting shot is not normally great, and it's especially bad when you're playing these Paper Tigers, or in the case of the Langley, a converted Collier. After that, your inclination might be to take Tanaka, because extra torpedo damage sounds pretty awesome, but it actually doesn't work on carriers, only ship-borne torpedoes. So you get into a strange situation of what you actually want to take. For my money, I'd actually suggest Reinhardt Shear, because fires interrupt your ability to launch or land planes for some reason. Willis Lee to reduce the damage control time. Vian to reduce the chance that you'll be hit by something. Campioni to reduce the damage should you actually be hit by something. Or if you're a fast enough aircraft carrier, and this is not the Langley, Bruce Fraser. Because going a little bit faster is going to occasionally be very helpful for you. But other than these, the choices that you're given in Legends right now are a little bit lacking. And unfortunately, you can't take the other aircraft carrier captain as an inspiration either. The only thing worth mentioning here is as you're fitting out all this stuff, fully packed actually does increase the number of charges for your cap, also known as the combat air patrol, which are the fighters that fly around your ship, as well as consumables for each of your plane types. While each of your planes do have an engine cooling consumable, your dive bombers and your torpedo bombers actually have different counters for how many consumables they have. Normally, they both start with two, which might cause some confusion, but choosing fully packed here actually increases both of those to three, meaning that you're getting a little bit more out of that decision than meets the eye. And when starting with higher level carriers, say tier five or up, this may actually become a better choice. I dare say, I expect it to become a better choice. Now that you've fitted out your aircraft carrier, what in the world are you supposed to do? Well, the best thing that an aircraft carrier can do is spot things. And that means flying around the map and finding things for your teammates to shoot at. You're especially fast with your aircraft, particularly when compared to any surface vessel. Also, because you are especially fast, you are uniquely qualified to defend the base. You don't even have to be all that close to it in order to affect the outcome of the game. 
I would say, more than anything, that those are probably your number one and number two priorities. After that, picking off isolated ships is the best thing that you can do with your time. This is a little bit more specific than simply doing damage, in quotes, since your ship can be rendered relatively useless over the course of a battle through losses of your planes. A single ship flying out in the middle of the ocean is a lot more vulnerable to attack by aircraft carrier than, say, several of them together. And you should generally not try to attack several of them together. Now we're going to hit very briefly on movement, how you should move in an aircraft carrier. It's actually very difficult in Legends right now. And generally what you want to probably do is pick the strong side and sail relatively slowly behind it to support it. Uh, the strong side in a game that is predominantly based on AI might be the side that has the most human beings who are capable of thought, uh, but they do occasionally let you down. One thing that you do not want to do in an aircraft carrier is become completely isolated, and you definitely don't want a destroyer having a straight line to run right at you. And at the very least, what you do need to do in these games is travel at least two kilometers in order to get any experience, in spite of the fact that it doesn't appear that you need to do anything in order to actually contribute to the outcome of the game. Now that said, don't get too frustrated if you don't place at the top of your team. Right now the XP system is strongly weighted towards you not doing all that well based on the math. And also, the computer plays these games with the subtlety of a starving late war peasant ordered into a bonsai charge to preserve the honor of his god king, which tends to mean a lot of the hit points get eaten up pretty quickly in the first part of the game, and you don't really get a lot of reward because of that. Now that you're equipped, now that you're moving around, and now that you know generally what you want to do, we're going to talk about how to actually do damage in World of Warships in an aircraft carrier. These are the attack runs, and for Legends right now we have two types of aircraft. First, we have the dive bomber. The dive bomber flies up high, it dives down low, and tries to land bombs on enemy ships. Ideally, when you're attacking with the dive bomber, you want to attack along the length of a ship. And it's actually a little bit ideal to be approaching it in the same direction that it's traveling because that will limit the amount of time that you're in its anti-aircraft. This way, the ship actually passes beneath you and your target will more or less move along the length of the ship. You can try to attack across the width of the ship, or the beam, but this usually means that you're going to have to start your run short and then the target is probably moving left to right or right to left below you. Your target will maybe potentially be even turning, which means that it may be drifting, and there are a few seconds after you hit release for the bombs to actually drop to the surface. Meaning that on top of all of the RNG, there's a lot of stuff going on there that might not work out in your favor, and it's a lot easier just to make sure that the ship is always beneath you by attacking along the length, from the front to the back, or from the back to the front. And yes, depending on how early you do release your bombs, there's going to be more or less travel time, pretty much anywhere between 1 and 3 seconds. Though less accurate, there are reasons to drop your bombs from high altitude, but this is usually because you need to compensate for having not judged the speed or distance all that well, and you want at least some chance of hitting, or because you know you've missed and you just want to release your planes to start heading back as quickly as possible. That is sometimes a good idea just to preserve the offensive capability of your ship. The other type of attack aircraft that you have are torpedo bombers. When lining up torpedo attacks, you actually want to do it exactly the opposite way. You want to see the full length of ship stretching from left to right on your screen, rather than the narrow front or back of the ship. The reason for this is obviously just surface area. It's going to take a pretty decent amount of time for most ships to turn out of the way. And obviously, if you can see a lot of real estate, there's a lot of real estate for you to hit. Once dropped, torpedoes do have a certain arming distance, and different planes have different arming distances, and the speed of torpedoes can vary pretty considerably. American torpedoes require less time to arm, 
but are exceptionally slow. While Japanese torpedoes have a higher arming distance, which isn't great, but travel faster, making them in some ways easier to use. As far as the arming distances in the test event, the American torpedoes seem to be right around 700 meters on the Langley, and the Japanese torpedoes seem to be more like 900 on the Hosho. To be safe, it's probably a good idea to drop before you come up on 0.7 or 0.9 kilometers though, particularly if your target is angled and traveling a little bit towards you, because if your torpedoes don't arm, even if they hit, they'll do no damage. In order to maximize your damage, you need to target the right ship in order to be effective as a carrier. In general, battleships are the largest and most well-defended targets with the most hit points that you can face. They are also the easiest to hit, and just like in reality, if you don't count the existence of aircraft carriers anyway, they're probably the thing that you want to sink the most. Cruisers tend to put up a heck of a fight for their size, and are reasonably sized overall. They're a bit harder to hit and boast a decent AA in general, particularly if they're of the higher tier American variety. Cruisers can be counted on to be a little bit more dodgy than battleships, which makes them a little bit less of a target for you, but since they have low torpedo reduction, they actually will net you a pretty healthy amount if you are able to hit them, uh, usually because they're either stationary or are dedicated to a straight line. When we come to destroyers, your primary use against destroyers, particularly without the existence of rocket planes at this point, is to spot them. This is not really going to become a big deal in the test event because the AI starts shooting at you no matter what class it is, no matter how dumb that decision is. But once we get into having to play humans, uh, that can make a pretty considerable difference. Destroyers tend to have pretty poor AA, though there are some exceptions, but their high speed and maneuverability make them the sort of thing you'd only want to target if you're extremely desperate or if you're targeting an AI which is going to drive in a straight line. When targeting each of these ship classes, you generally need to obviously give a little bit more lead to destroyers, a little bit less lead to cruisers, and the least amount of lead to battleships, no matter which class of attack aircraft you're using. Performing multiple attack runs against a target is the best way to maximize your damage. This is relatively easy to do if your target drives in a straight line. As you can see here in this series of infographics, it took me literally hours upon hours to create, I'm not even joking, and which I'm still not all that happy with. You should try to regulate your speed, generally holding back on the throttle as you come in with torpedo bombers towards your target, and then accelerating away from it, or some combination of the two of them, to give yourself enough time for the spread of your torpedoes or the target of your bombs to get as small as possible. If your target is maneuvering, in a torpedo bomber, you generally want to turn towards its aft. If it is turning towards you, continue the loop around and that will help you at least spend less time in its AA. If he's turning away, you can actually cut back relatively quickly and it'll actually make your job slightly easier, even if you do have to slam on your brakes. For dive bombers, you probably want to look over your shoulder and if you see your target moving to the left of the screen, then you're also going to want to turn left. And then obviously if they're turning towards the right hand of the screen, you want to turn right. Because by the end of those turns, you're going to probably be nearly lined up to make a stern to bow run on that target. Running up on a target from behind does increase the amount of time that you have to spend over a target, meaning that the maximum amount of AA damage that you're going to take is a little bit higher, but it'll also still increase the likelihood of hitting and causing fires because you'll be attacking along the length of the ship and you'll be less likely to miss. One thing that you will learn as you play more of this is in a dive bomber you basically need to provide a similar amount of room in order for you to target from the back as the front so oftentimes you're actually aiming at water in front of the ship when you start your attack run even if you're attacking from behind. Now obviously, since if you were attacking from the front, 
you'd be drifting towards the front of the ship. You're going to need a little bit more, but it's a more similar amount than you would expect. And the best way for you to maximize your damage, obviously, is by not taking a ton of losses to your planes. For this, I suggest a few things. With the exception of the Arkansas, which has no AA guns at all, by the way, be wary of American ships. Uh, do not fly into areas where there are several ships grouped up because all of their AA is going to attack you and murder you very quickly. And that does mean, just like when you're at the range, pay attention to what's beyond your target because you're going to have to fly into that after you drop your bombs or torpedoes. Also be aware that AA generally comes in layers. Uh, generally speaking, short, medium, and long range. And the closer that you are to an enemy, generally the more damage you're going to take because short range AA tends to be pretty high damage per minute and it's automatic damage. While long range damage is also automatic, it at least tends to be fairly minimal by comparison. Also sometimes on PC, flying in a zigzag pattern will help you avoid flak, which are those bursts of black smoke. It seems to kind of work in Legends too, but I haven't quite got the timing down, so you'll be doing a good job if you avoid most of them, because they will damage several planes in your squadron if you fly through them, as opposed to how AA normally works, which is to attack the rightmost plane that's in your squadron. And as far as some general tips for how to survive these first test events, this isn't a bad segue actually into my final thoughts, which is essentially try to stay inside of the ship's AA as little as possible. This means using your mini-map to judge the optimal range of approach, either lining up so that you intercept them broadside with torpedoes or head-on with bombs. And for the record, most ship long-range AA picks up between 4.5 and 5.5 kilometers at the tiers that we're talking about. And definitely use the mini-map because sometimes your visual identification of a ship may make it seem a little bit more broadside or a little bit more head-on than it actually is. Remember to pick on those stragglers. That will minimize all of your dangers, unless they're a Texas or some other horrifically scary thing. Uh, my guess is the California will be that next week. Try to use some of your speed boost to make up ground as you travel across the map. You will want to probably leave at least a third maybe as much as half of your engine heat to maneuver around once you get close to a target. And while briefly on the subject of engine boost, if you're going to use it, really use it. And that's pretty much only after you've gotten to full heat. While the consumable is active, you don't actually gain any heat whether or not you're speeding up or slowing down your speed. So continue to do that as long as you want while the consumable is active. It's only for about six seconds anyway so probably not a huge deal but getting into this habit will help you get across the map consistently more quickly and allow you to do a little bit more damage over time and last but not least i have a sentence that doesn't even continue from there and i have no idea where the script is going so this video is just probably going to end in any case this is a real quick guide uh, as carriers develop, I hope to probably improve some of these infographics and improve, uh, obviously, the, the quality of this sort of guide. But I did want to get that out there as we go into the weekend. So hopefully everybody can have a little bit more fun playing around uh, with aircraft carriers, or as they are occasionally known as Sky Cancer. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this brief little tutorial. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks,